Welcome back to the guy doing things and finally we are back on air again after two weeks of chilling but we promise to uh, deliver some great content and starting off with the mini coffee company uh, based in the Western Cape making me uh, want to do a road trip but uh, more on that later. Uh, welcome back. Thank you so much for supporting me. This is episode 24. Still young and still uh, going strong. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. Get back. Uh, get, sit back and relax. This is going to be episode 24 of The Guy Doing Things. Bra. And uh, this episode comes with a wild disclaimer. (laughs) Uh, I got a new computer and did the whole episode uh, on the same app I use the whole time. And uh, once I finished, I realized the mic wasn't plugged in. (laughs) Uh, So the sound is going to differ very much from from now because now the mic is plugged in but the whole interview is still really cool uh it's listenable (laughs) it's just not the best quality um but that's life so enjoy the 24th episode that's what you do that's what happens if you take two weeks off uh never again (laughs) but enjoy it i'll be foster with the mini coffee company Uh, let's get into it And uh, after a long silence, we are back with uh, the guy doing things, and we have a very special guest today. Well, all the guests are special, uh, <laughs> but uh, we have a, a kind of a long distance call uh, from uh, Cape Town. Where exactly in the Western Cape are you based, Obi? Hi, Fonten. Firstly, thanks for, for having me or having us. Um, to answer your question, we are not in Cape Town. We we're actually in Rawsonville, a small town about I'd say eighty kilometers from Cape Town, so, so close to uh, Worcester, just after the Toys Cliff Tunnel. If you drive on Pole side, so small wine wine growing region or, or town. That's and it's beautiful. Those those, those mountains over that side is is beautiful. Um, so we have Arby from uh, Mini Coffee Company. Uh, more about that later on. Um, but thank you and uh, thank you for taking out the time. Uh, we've been struggling to get a, a fixed appointment between me and you. Uh, but uh, here we are now, May- maybe with some construction work or dogs in the background. But here we are. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no worries. Thanks, thanks for having us, making the time and the effort. So appreciate it. Great. Um, so just on a, a personal side, um, I would like to ask, uh, you know, um, where where are you from initially? Are you from Western Cape region? Um, and what did you study? Okay, I, I actually uh, I was born and bred in the Free State, Eastern Free State to be specific. I was, Free State. Uh, well, Free State, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I grew up in Senegal and um, yeah, my parents still live there. They... Um, yeah, my, my dad, my father and mother were both the, um, dentists and also uh, um, farming on the side. But yeah, so I was my whole school life in the Free State and then came down to uh, Stellenbosch to study. And yeah, I studied, actually I, I studied quite a few things and studied quite a few years. But in the yeah. end, um, I started off with like a... Uh, like a bridge, a bridge here to do engineering, and halfway through I realized I'm not gonna become a civil engineer or going go into construction. Yeah. And then I decided to study winemaking. So. Oh, I that's studied, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, so that is actually uh, a lot of fun and interesting. 
But yeah, so I studied winemaking and also towards the end I realized um, work is a bit scarce, especially in South Africa for, for a winemaker. If you're not, um, especially I that don't come from a wine uh, winemaking family or yeah. has got a wine farm or, or that type of background. Um, so I decided I'll, yeah better skill myself to, to be more able to work anywhere in the country. So I yeah. decided to um, do post-grad studies. So I did a master's in soil science. And actually, yeah, that was that was right after I finished winemaking. Yeah. But mainly it was more to, to play a bit more rugby for a few more years. <laughs> <laughs> Who did you so, play yeah, for in Stellenbosch, if I may ask? Well, I, I played for my res, and then um, yeah, I played a bit for Marty's as well, but not not in the not in the first first team, more yeah, toward the second and the third teams and the, the sevens. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, the, those teams make up uh, you know the the heart of the rugby culture, I would say. Uh, if if or that was my experience of of res rugby. Yeah, from yeah. the second and third team, uh, you get all the chias. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. It was, uh, it was more of a. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was, it was more for the, I'd say, for the passion and the friendships than for, because I never, oh, I always knew I'll never be someone who's playing the World Cup. But um, I, I really enjoyed the like the uh, camaraderie and the. And the socialing of the rugby. Yeah. So yeah, for me it was it was actually a, a, it sounds silly, but yeah, it was a big big motivation to to stay a, two extra years in Stellenbosch and and, and study extras. To no, it, it, social more play rugby. <laughs> anyone yeah. who's been there knows it's it's not a it's not a bad reason to stay a bit longer. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um. So Obi, tell me, how did you how did you get into coffee eventually then? Okay, so yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, I've I've always always liked coffee, even since I was a, a little child. I, I liked coffee, but um, also <laughs> only later on in my life realized that the coffee we grew up with is not is not really coffee. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> so yes, um, that's terrible. It's like finding out Father Christmas doesn't exist. Yeah, exactly. So, um, <laughs> but but then, uh, the the flavor is sort of um, I like I, li I like the, the coffee flavor, and of course the more it's like um, it's like wine drinking. The more you uh, get to know how something tastes like a proper red wine, the more you get interested in it, and the more it's, uh, it it grows on you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was actually while I was so I always enjoyed coffee, but while I was doing my um, uh, post postgrad research for my soil science, I had a trial site in the small small town of um, at a few on an end. Yeah. And then um, I had to take a weekly trip uh, from Stellenbosch to the Fies on an end to do some measurements. And then every every morning on the way there, I would stop at a like at a farm stall uh, close to Grabo, and I would stop for a for a nice coffee and uh, something to eat. And yeah. um, obviously, that coffee was great. But then something that intrigued me was every time I I, um, I ordered a coffee, I, I had a chat with one of the baristas, and every time I I looked at the coffee grinders, and on these coffee grinders, you can a lot of them display the like the shot count. Basically, meaning how many coffees or how many shots have that grinder made until they've reset it. Yeah. So um, you, I, I'd come there, and then it would be like, let's say, for this, if it wasn't a, at the start of the week, there would be like four hundred or seven hundred on the on the um, on the dial. On, on the dial. And yeah, yeah. So, sometimes I'll I'll get there also in the middle of the week or towards the end of the week on a Friday and then all of a sudden it's up 2,000 and these guys have got like um, three or four coffee machines in the surrounding area or the, or the shop yeah so I, I made a like a rough calculation in my head obviously while I was driving so I thought these, these guys are um, if, if you take the amount of 
shots they they pull out of the grinders they, they obviously moving a lot of coffee yeah and, um, yeah yeah just out of that realized so these guys are a farm stall but out of the the coffee they must make a killing <laughs> because yeah. if i make the calculations and everything i think um, they're actually doing quite good and yeah then it just always intrigued me like if you've got a good if you've got a good spot where there's a lot of feet um the the chances of doing good with coffee is is actually uh, yeah it's it's good <laughs> so, yeah yeah um, always had this in my in the back of my mind in anyways uh, finished studying and went on working and everything and then yeah a few years ago I decided to study again um, so I enrolled for a um, MBA and obviously during this time you get um, assignments and you get like a lot of case studies and all those type of things yeah and, yeah, and yeah you get like I, I almost say your brain is like overstimulated with um, <laughs> ideas and things and, and yeah um, in the end I, I just um, I, I realized because yeah just to say after after I went to Stellenbosch and worked I started working um, I got I got married with my wife and we moved back to Stellenbosch and went from Stellenbosch to move to Rosenville mm. in 2016. But I never had a, a garage. So my, my student car, which was the Mini, yeah. um, was uh, was back at home in Senegal. And then, um, yeah, well, actually what happened is during that time uh, of doing my MBA, my neighbors... Is, a, is an old lady and her, she had like this big garage and um, uh, we don't have a garage on, on our on our um, yard for our house yes so I asked her could, could we rent the, the garage but it's a it's quite a it's more like a barn it's like a like a proper store yeah <laughs> so, yeah um, <laughs> um, obviously all of a sudden I had more more than enough space for the for the cars and I, I realized um, I can can go and, um, or I can bring my mini back to to the Cape because I've got space for it. It's not going to just stand around in the the wind in the weather. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's actually what what in the end what happened is I got the garage next door and I said, well, I'm going to bring the the minis the mini back to to the Cape and um, just to have it around because it's my it's my student car. It's like a, a hobby. I enjoyed the little car. Yeah. But then I I got this this idea of combining it with with the coffee because everywhere you go around you see this um, tuk tuk cars and everything with coffee machines. Yeah. And I thought yes, I, that's a cool idea. But why would I go and spend money on a tuk tuk if I I got a very cool mini I can just try and convert it maybe it can work. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. This this idea just got. Um, yeah, just a lot more traction in my brain over time and eventually I decided it, it must work. There's no, I'm, I'm just going to try it and see if, if it works. Um, and well, obviously I was the whole time studying, so I didn't really have time. Yeah. And uh, towards the end, I think it was around this time, uh, August, my parents came to visit from the, from the free state and they, um, surprised me with a with an old uh, espresso machine and oh, again cool. <laughs> I was like okay now now this has to work I've got this mini I've got this espresso machine but still and I've got this idea that I'm going to combine it but still I actually didn't have time so in the end that espresso machine and the minis and everything just stood in the garage for at least five months until I finished the MBA and I was like okay the first thing that I'm going to do after I've given in my last assignments, I'm going to start this um, building in this coffee machine into the mini. So, yeah. yeah, that's a very long story, but that's in the end how I got into coffee. It was a whole sequence of events that led, the one led to another. So, yeah. yeah, it's sort of one of those, it, it sounds like one of those stories where coffee kind of found you. <laughs> you yeah, didn't yeah. go out and pursue it. It, it kind of yeah. went the other yeah. way around. Exactly. It was. It was. It was. I, I always, as I said, I had this idea, and, and um, 
I, I never thought I'll like become someone with a coffee brand. I never in my life. But I, yeah. uh, the sequence of events just led to the, the, the every event built on 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 each other, and eventually we ended up with with the brand, the Mini Coffee Company. So yeah, as that's you said, awesome. Mini, uh, the, the coffee found us <laughs> yeah that's awesome and yeah. uh so so what i what i gather from you guys as well uh unfortunately i haven't actually tasted uh your coffee yet uh so hopefully <laughs> yeah. we can get in touch and and, <laughs> and and we can do all that whole process but uh from what i've gathered you guys and that's why i followed you guys and got in touch with you because i love the adventures that you do um so how did that come into the the whole coffee journey and how does it link with your kind of company motto or your company mission to, you know, pair the coffee and the mini and the adventure side? Is that just something that comes yeah. naturally to you guys? Uh, is that part, is that an integral part of your, of your mission or your motto? No, well, uh, yeah, that's actually also interesting. Um, I mean, I can try and take <laughs> all the shine for all the ideas and everything but it actually the adventures was was not my idea it was it was my wife um that, that uh. um uh she proposed the idea of why don't we every time we we take the mini we say we'll go on a on a mini adventure and we make a, a nice video of it or something like that because yeah um all these you get all these tv shows of people doing road trips and then they make a, a video of it and everything so it was it was something that was sort of normal for yeah. making videos or making a something of a little thing if you, if you understand what i'm saying yeah um, yeah yeah so, so in the end it was uh, it was just again something that that happened as a idea we said well it's actually quite a cool idea. Let's take some footage while we're going on a to an event and uh, just uh, yeah, fill in all the content, try to make make a video. And in the end, it came out as as nice adventures for us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, it, it was never it was never planned. It was also, as I said, something that just happened as a result of chatting and taking what you have and, and making the best of it. So yeah, yeah. And now, yeah. now here we are, and it's it's a it's truly a cool uh, um, a journey to follow. So um, everyone, everyone listening can go and and, and uh, have a look. It's mini underscore coffee underscore company, and uh, it's the coolest. It's everything from cats and dogs to adventures and coffee. Uh, it's an amazing page. I love it, and I I love the. Thanks. The way that you I speak about it, that it's just something that kind of uh, kind of happened, and that kind of links to my next question. I always ask this uh, these type of questions on the podcast to to uh, motivate other people listening to this. Um, you know, if you maybe said, okay, I'm doing an MBA and I want to work for this company and that, and you you would have closed your mind to this opportunity stumbling upon you um so if 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 you had this open mind about okay you know i'm gonna do an mba but you know i'm not i'm not necessarily just zeroing down on my plans uh if you hadn't done that the coffee company wouldn't happen so um yeah. oh that's what i assume <laughs> but yeah, yeah. um yeah, how would you how would you then encourage other people's uh, other people to uh to see life uh, as an adventure and to take that, you know, that unexpected journey uh, uh, in life. Um, how would you encourage them? Well, I, I think um, maybe also suited to to your question and our uh, also our, our motto of the the mini coffee companies is enjoy, enjoying the small things. Um, mm. I think that's something we tend to. To overlook in life is, is as you said, uh, uh, doing the MBA. Wow, it sounds. Uh, or I'm gonna get this glamorous consulting job, or gonna sit in a penthouse somewhere. But in the end, is that's not really what life is about. I mean, um, it's literally taking what you have and and making the best of it. And I mean that that includes education. Uh, there's no no 
problem if you do enjoy working in a corporate environment in and climbing the corporate ladder. Yeah. But I think what we, what I realized out of this whole journey of, of the, the mini coffee company, it's it's the first thing in my life where I haven't uh, I haven't forced it. Yeah. Even though my yeah. my my surname is Foster, I, <laughs> the first thing I, I, I haven't forced. Uh, everything sort of um, f- fell in place as as we went on, and, and actually, I never tried to to um, yeah. I, I I never tried. To, obviously, I tried to make it work, but in the end, I, I tried to enjoy it. I didn't try to make it my. Um, if it, if it fails, it's it's going to be the end of my life and all this money and all this effort is, is down the drain. I, I just try to enjoy the journey, enjoy every every moment. And I think one of one of my or one of the things I'd say for someone that would that um, to to see life as an adventure is to is to actually leverage what what you have. Um, yeah. Don't always think um, there's there's better stuff in, in different countries or there's better, um, you should buy a better coffee machine or you should buy a tuk-tuk. I mean, yeah, I had yeah. the minis and I, and I used it. Um, mm. but, but I mean, in essence, I was also, I was fortunate to, to have it. But I mean, in, in, in many situations, that's the that's the case. We tend to, to miss what we have. And that, that includes uh, like an, a network of people, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the help we got to, to get the, the the brand and the business to where it is is, is friends and, and people we actually knew beforehand and, and asking them for for help or for advice or or yeah just trying to to get the thing started is is is, is leveraging from what you what you have and, and yeah um, and in the end also enjoy it because yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no point in um, Doing something and, and hating every every minute of it. So yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, that's that's what I I would uh, recommend. <laughs> that's awesome advice, and I think I loved yeah. what you said earlier um, about mini adventures. So it's it's a cool yeah. wordplay, and I don't know if it's if it's uh, you know uh, on purpose, but I took it as that you know the mini yeah. adventures and the mini. Um, <laughs> you, yeah. you don't necessarily, everyone thinks they need to go and see Machu Picchu or, you know, climb Mount yeah. Everest, but those mini yeah. everyday adventures is, is crucial. And that's what you guys are harnessing. And it's so awesome to watch. Uh, and thank you for that advice. It was really cool. I'm definitely going to write it down. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, no, no, it's a, it's a pleasure. And, and thanks for, for, um, for having us and, and yeah, enjoying our, our story and, and the end, I think that's exactly what we're trying to to portray. Is, is it's not a it's not about uh, as you said uh, it's not about to have a, a good road trip. You have to go to Europe and have a backpacking trip. You can actually just drive fifty kilometers towards your closest nature reserve, or depending on where you are. Yeah. But go and hike up a mountain and and sit with someone you enjoy and 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 have a coffee. Um, in the yeah. end, that's that's what makes life worthwhile and makes it worth um, waking up in the morning. So we are, yeah. I think in the end, for us, it's all about um, having fun. I yeah. Mean, that's that's the brand we're trying to establish, and that's why we we enjoy it because having fun. If someone has fun, it's it's. Um, some I'm struggling with the English word, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's click. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, uh, so, no, I forgot it as well. It's contagious. <laughs> yes, there we no, go. Contagious. So, so you can, if someone else is having fun or having a good laugh, it's, it's contagious, and um, mm. I think that's very important. It's not always about about money and everything else. It's about actually going to bed at night and feeling like a human being and feeling um, like you you have a valuable life. So yeah, yeah. yeah. But thanks so much, uh, Obi, and uh, uh, we had the Instagram page, and uh, you guys on Facebook as well. They can just say Mini Coffee Company. Um, yes. And yeah. you've got a website as well. Yeah, we've got a website. It's uh, www.minicoffeeco.co.za. Great, that's so. awesome, and um, that's that's such a cool uh, 
such a cool brand go check it out uh that was rb forster and uh hopefully we'll get uh we'll get in contact soon maybe we can do a halfway point because i've got family in senegal as well uh oh, yeah. i'll drive there awesome. you'll drive there i'll drink coffee <laughs> <laughs> fantastic no that sounds and, I, I, I don't think the mini will make it all the way but i'll, I'll send you some <laughs> coffee beans <laughs> so yeah yeah that'll yeah, be, that'll awesome. be awesome thanks for your time and i appreciate it no 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 worries and, and Thanks again for the reach out and, and the opportunity to, to chat to you. It was, it was nice. Such so. a pleasure. I'll be Forster, the mini coffee company. Such a cool story. Um, if you're down in Western Cape, I hope you get to experience uh, them. And if you're up here in Pretoria, Gauteng, Limpopo, uh, well, we just have to wait. And if you're somewhere overseas, just come and visit. It's a, it's a lovely little country at the bottom of Africa. Thanks for listening to episode uh, 24. And uh, next we have 25. We'll have a little celebration. I think it will be in order. Thank you so much for the support. See you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>